Shoreline Church. Yeah, amen. It's a little minute and 20 second snapshot of Shoreline Church that we could have spent tens of hours showing you images and pictures of what God is doing in Shoreline Church. And, and what I want you to understand is that Shoreline Church is you. If you're part of this congregation, now we always have people visiting from other places and you're part of a local church, but we're also part of the capital C church, all churches that love and worship Jesus. We're part of one body. And, and we're going to celebrate today the way God is at work, the things that God is doing here at Shoreline Church. If you're here from another church visiting, heading back home in the next week or two to where you come from, just begin to dream about what God wants to do in and through your local church. Now, it's interesting in the church how there's kind of certain language and ways that things are said that when you've been around a certain church for a while, you sort of know what to say at the right time. And so like when Pastor Dennis finished the prayer and he said something to the effect of, and all God's people said, amen. and you kind of give an amen, that's kind of something you learn if you're around church for a while in certain churches, I'll say that sort of thing. Uh, if you have a different kind of church background, uh, one, of the, one of the lines that happens in some church traditions, is, and if you, if you can help me out, if you know the response, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Ooh, lots of folks, really got some background there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord be with you and also with you. Now, other church backgrounds, here's another one. If you know this one, kind of help me out here. Ready? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. does that sound nice to say? <laughs> but is it true? Yes. Is it, do you really believe that? I mean, we, we all know, we know, and we can say, God is good all the time when, when the sun is shining, when my back feels good, you know, when there's more money in the account than there are bills coming in, oh, God is good all the time, right? But when there's a month of fog hanging over the California coastline, you haven't seen the sun for a month. When my back, I wake up and instead of going, praise Lord, I go, oh, I'm, if I can get out of bed at all. We have three of our pastors homesick today. Three of our pastors who couldn't make it because they're weak. No, that's not. <laughs> that's not in my notes. No, <laughs> but, but we have three of our pastors who have, they have the flu. And, and so we have people probably watching online at home right now and, and watching that way. But when, when my body doesn't, when my body's not cooperating, when I don't have enough money, when the fog's hanging low over my life, is God just as good? Yes. Do you believe that? Because it's true. God's goodness is not contingent upon my personal circumstances. Because if it was, God's goodness would go like this. <laughs> right? I mean, when things are going my way, God is good all the time. When things aren't, God's not so good. It doesn't work that way. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. He is unchanging. The theologians call it immutable. God doesn't change. God is God, and God is good. Oh, let's try it again. God is good. All the time? Be watching out for that this morning. Be on your toes. All right? We don't normally do that, but we can try it. We can try it for a morning. Uh, God is good all the time. You know, it's interesting. Uh, my wife and I have uh, had a friend. He passed. He went to be with the Lord last year. Very uh, great influence in my life as, a, as an author named Calvin Miller, pastor, author. And Sherry was reminding me. I, I thought it was a, pre a preaching class, but it was actually a conversation with Calvin Miller that he shared with Sherry and I. He said, remember, every time you preach, every time you teach, he says, remember that the people you're talking to, about half of them are hurting. About half of them have lost a loved one, gone through a hard situation, had a breakup, have, have a health issue, have emotional turmoil. He says, about half the people are going to be struggling when you communicate. Remember that. And then he said this to us. And remember, about half the time that you teach or preach, you'll be hurting over something in your life or something about a person close to you that you love. I thought, Wow. That, that, and, that was, and that was great wisdom and great insight. But I want to say this morning that God is good. All the time. Most of you are on your toes for that one. All the time. All and, and I want, to, I want to think that through and I want to ponder that together. I want to look at God's word and dig into this concept because, because the scriptures are clear that God's goodness isn't based on my circumstances. God's goodness is based on who God is. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 107. If you don't, we'll have the first verse on the screen and you can listen to the rest. But Psalm 107, and in this passage, there's a number of cycles of kind of little vignettes talking about different struggles and different challenges, and yet God's goodness through it all, that God's presence and God's power through it all. So Psalm 107, verse 1 begins with these words. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. That sounds like God is good all the time, doesn't it? 
For he is good as love endures forever. When you read that, you think, well, then, then that means I'm, I'm lining up here to hear a psalm that's all about positive, happy stuff. This is going to be one of those psalms where it's just kind of everything's going well, but it doesn't turn out that way. It continues for a moment, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Let those he redeemed from the land of the foe. So now they're in a time of redemption, but they were going through a tough time in the land of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. The picture is that they've been gathered in, but there was a hard season, now they're in a good season. Then it gets more specific, and this is one of the little storylines that carries through Psalm 107. Verse four, and some of you may feel like this today. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They couldn't find a place even to settle down. They were hungry. They were thirsty. Their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. This psalm is so, so very clear. That, that, that God is good all the time, all the time God is good, and yet there are hard times, and there are deep valleys. But as we come to the end of this year, I want to pause as a congregation. If you're a guest from another church, we're so glad you're here. We give you a warm welcome as part of God's family, and I hope you begin to think about your congregation, what God is doing there. But, but as we come to the end of this year, we're going to be thinking this morning about how God has been good, how God has worked, what God is doing in the life of Shoreline Church. Your church. And by the way, Shoreline Church is you. The church is not a building. The church is not an organizational system. The church is the body of Christ, the gathering of God's people together. So we gathered at 8.30. We'll gather now at 10 o'clock. We got a group that's going to gather at 11.30. We're gathering many online. We're, gonna, we're gathering in the family worship venue. We'll be gathering this evening in Spanish with Iglesia Shoreline. But, but all of that is, is Shoreline Community Church. We're, we're a congregation, but that congregation really is a makeup of you. So when I say, look what God's doing in Shoreline Church, here's what I'm saying. Look what God's doing in you and through you. I want you to hear that. Some of you say, well, I've only been coming to Shoreline for three weeks. And I just kind of have shown up at church and gone home. I haven't done much. You're still part of the church. You're part of the body of Christ. And I want you to, to, to be excited about and celebrate the good work that God is doing. God has been good to Shoreline Church. God has been good. I've been a pastor for about 30 years now. It's a big chunk of my life. And I'll tell you what, I have never in all my years of ministry been at a time where I can stop and look back at a previous year and see all that God has done and look ahead of the coming year and what I believe God wants to do. I've never been at a time in ministry where I'm more excited than I am right now at Shoreline Church. I believe that God is on the move. I believe that God is in, in working in power. And even, even though there's darkness in our world, and there always has been, and there always will be until Jesus returns, even though there's struggles and pain, even though there's valleys, God is moving. God is doing things. And so I want to think about how God has been good to Shoreline Church. And I want to share a few things with you that I just don't get a chance to pause as the lead pastor of Shoreline and talk about very often. So I want to share a few things. First, Shoreline Church's staff, we have a staff from, from, you know, from people who are in administrative roles to pastors to directors to all different roles at Shoreline to custodial team. I want you to know that I look at our staff as a church and our staff is unified. Our staff has a common vision. We believe it's from Jesus Christ. Our staff members like each other. You think, well, of course they do. Your church staff doesn't always work that way because we're people, Right? I look at our staff right now as we go forward and feel like God has put together just the right people and it is incredibly exciting. Our leadership team, and some of you don't even know what that term means, but that's our church board, our leadership team, is made up of men and women who are part of this church. Our leadership team, no members of our leadership team, voting members of our leadership team are on the staff except me. All the rest are just volunteers from the congregation. They're men and women who love Jesus, who are passionate about prayer, who have wisdom, and who speak into the life of this church. They gather every 30 days, sometimes more if we need to, and they speak into the life of this church. As a matter of fact, they decide how much money is spent on everything in the life of the church. I'm the only voting staff member on the entire leadership team, and I never vote. I'm the one that says, all in favor, all opposed. And the reason I don't vote is because I'm supposed to vote if there's a tie. And I'm just not that stupid. You know, okay, we have half, if we have a tie, I'm going to say, let's pray for another month. 
right? Let's seek the Lord together. I'm not just going to go, okay, let me decide and cut the pastor in half kind of a thing. But, but I want you to know that, that the men and women who are in the leadership team of Shoreline Church, they love Jesus. They love this church. They speak wisdom into this church. And all of our staff members come and they bring their, they say, here's what I'd like to spend this year. Here's what I think we need to accomplish the vision for women's ministry, men's ministry, children's ministry. But the leadership team says yes or no. And there's times where they'll say, boy, here's what we got. And, and so that body, that team of leaders are so, uh, are, are so committed to Jesus and bring so much wisdom, I'm honored to serve with them. And so, so I want you to know that, that, that there's health, health in the leadership of the church that you're a part of. As I look back over the last year and think about what God has been doing, I want to share something else that's incredibly exciting to me. There are churches around the world and around the United States that can go an entire year and not see one person put their faith in Jesus Christ. Not see one person come to the cross, confess their sin, receive the sacrifice of Jesus, confess, you know, become his follower. There's churches that have to go an entire one, two, three years, don't see a single person come to faith in Jesus. And this last year, and not right, I'm not talking about like in children's programming and women's ministries and outreach events. I mean, in this worship center, just here during church services, where people have publicly committed to turn from sin and become a follower of Jesus Christ. Listen closely. 60 people this year became followers of Jesus. Someone say amen. Yeah. Now, you can give me a glory, you can give me an hallelujah, you can give me a praise Jesus, whatever you want, but that's good news. Amen? amen. Yeah. And then this year we had 52 people who in the worship center here or down at the ocean went under the water in baptism as a sign of dying to sin and ending an old life and came out of the water as a declaration that they were raised again in the power of Jesus Christ. 52 people were baptized at Shoreline Church. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Uh, that's, just, that's just exciting. And as I look, as I look, our world needs good news. Our community here needs the power and the presence of Jesus. We need churches that are on fire and passionate about the gospel. And I see God, not only this last year, working in our church that way, but I see this coming year. As good, as I really believe this going to be one of the most dynamic and exciting years in the life of this church as we impact our community and each other here in this church and to the ends of the earth. We have growth groups in this church. And these are groups, are small groups of people that gather to study God's word, to pray together, to encourage each other, to keep each other accountable. We doubled our growth groups in the last year. That's exciting to me. It's a connection place. As a matter of fact, we're starting a five-week series next week uh, called A Healthy Life. And if you want to jump into a growth group for five weeks and try it out, just go to the, to the growth group table out here in the, in the lobby after the service and just say, hey, sign me up for a group. I want to jump in for five weeks and see what it's like. I think you'll love it. It's a place to connect. We have more students in middle school ministry and high school ministry right now than we've had in the previous number of years. Our student, and do students in our world need a place to gather and hear about Jesus? Can I get an amen? We, we, we need to be re reaching our young people. Our women's ministry continues to grow Bible studies. We have a women's mentoring ministry where, where women who are further along in the faith will one-on-one -on -one mentor a younger woman in faith and help her grow and walk towards Jesus over months of spiritual growth. It's amazing. We have our mothers of preschoolers where, where young moms can gather and be encouraged and learn from God's word and, have, and kind of have care, good care for their children and gather together. Our women's Christmas program every year is an outreach opportunity to celebrate the message of Jesus, what Christmas is really about. And we clear all these chairs and turn this into a dining area. And we can't fit all the women that come, so we do it two nights in a row. Be because that's what God is doing in the life of your church. And so I want, I want just to, to celebrate that God is doing good things at Shoreline Church. And then God has been good to you and me. Again, we're starting next week a five-week series on healthy relationships and healthy finances and a healthy body, a healthy mind, a healthy soul. How do I have a healthy life? So we look at our personal lives, but I want you to begin this week thinking about, God, how have you been good to me? How have you been good? I know there's been highs and lows, but if you look back over the year and just identify where God has been good, it will blow your mind. God has been good to you in so many ways, and we forget. We kind of something good happens when we move to the next thing and the next thing. But pause and look back and reflect and give thanks and praise to God. Not only is God good, but God is on the move. God is doing things. In Psalm 68, verses 19 and 20, we read these words. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Our God bears our burdens. Our God saves. Our God is on the move. And the God who bore burdens back then, the God who bore burdens in the days of Jesus, he bears burdens today. And we need one who will come alongside and bear our burdens. And oftentimes, 
The way that God bears our burdens is through the body of Christ, is through the church, through each other. That's why we need to connect and be together and not stand alone in this world. We have a care ministry at Shoreline Church. Over the last couple of years, Pastor Dennis and his team have have launched new ministries, uh, divorce care, grief share, that are ministering to people going through some of the most painful experiences of life, caring for each other. But a couple of weeks ago, we met with all of the church pastors and directors and all the department leaders, and they said, here's our vision. I have right here, these are all the written kind of visions and dreams of what each of our ministry teams believes needs to happen in the coming year to glorify God, to grow our congregation, to serve you, and to serve our community. And every single one of our leaders presented their plan for the new year. And Pastor Dennis presented the care ministry with a vision for four new care ministries, entire new ministries coming up this year. And there's already, do you even know how many care ministries we have all together? Lots? Maybe more? Seven. Okay, seven different distinct ministries that Pastor Dennis leads, but he doesn't lead them, you lead them. It's all congregational members who lead the ministries. Isn't that true, Dennis? Dennis trains, equips, and mobilizes so people in the church can lead these ministries. We're looking at launching four new ministries to care for people in times of deep pain and struggle and loss and loneliness because that's what the church does. We bear burdens and we share the saving message of Jesus Christ. And so I want to just think together about how God is on the move at Shoreline Church. Uh, One of the things that has struck me about this church, and really the last year or so this has unfolded in a powerful way, is that we're a sending church. Pastor Walt, one of our our pastors, said to me, do you you realize, and he came with numbers, he said, he says, we have around 200 to 300 families that leave Shoreline every year. And almost none of them want to leave. They're with military and they're moved on to their next place. They're here as students and they're part of Shoreline Church, and then they move on once they finish school. Or they live here, and then they end up moving somewhere else for some reason. So we have all kinds of people that are coming, new people into our church, and people going out. And that used to kind of discourage and depress me. It doesn't anymore. I believe that God has put Shoreline in this very unique community where people flow in and out, listen closely, from all over the world. We have four continents sitting in the second row over here. I was just told that. We have four continents of young people sitting right here in row two on the right-hand side. And we might have the rest of the continents covered around the worship center and, and, and online. But, but, but the, the reality is that, that we are a church that doesn't just kind of say, let's gather together, huddle up, you know, make some warm cocoa, have a campfire, and sing Kumbaya till Jesus returns. <laughs> Kumbaya is an old song. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Anybody remember Kumbaya? It means come by here. It's just a little, little praise song. But, but, but some people say, well, that, the church exists to get Christians together and to huddle up and just to care for each other. Well, here's the truth. That's part of why we exist. Yes, we gather together to encourage each other, to strengthen each other, to grow in faith, and we do a lot of that here. But we also exist to go out with the good news of Jesus Christ. And so God sends people here well, lots of people come here through the military. And we, I know people who have become followers of, that came to Shoreline because they came through the military to be trained here. Somebody invited them to Shoreline. They were not a follower of Jesus. They were not a Christian. They became a Christian. And now as an officer, as a leader, as a language person, they're now going out and bringing the love of Jesus wherever they're sent. And they're sent by the military all over the world. But I believe that the military is not sending them. I believe it's God. Because I believe God's on the throne. Now God uses the military and God uses education and God uses business to scatter people. But we are pouring into, and I get, and I get to, now we've been doing this thing now where every quarter we tell people, if you're going to be leaving in the next quarter, come meet with the pastor. And we give you a little gift, we pray with you, and we want to send you in the name of Jesus. And we ask you also to share one way that God has blessed you and grown you in your faith while you were at Shoreline. Sometime we'll just write a bunch of those down and share them. It's just amazing. People saying, I met Jesus at Shoreline Church. And people saying, I met my husband or wife at Shoreline Church, and now I'm being sent somewhere else. People say, I came here broken and struggling, God's sending me out of here strengthened and filled with Jesus. But we are a church that is gonna be sending hundreds of families a year from here all over the world. I think that's exciting. I don't get depressed about that. I get excited. Because God will just send new people that we can pour into and invest in. And then I asked our global outreach leader to share, how is God using you, Shoreline Church, to bless the world. Let me give you a snapshot, just a couple things. We had a local church come to us and say, we don't know how to do good youth global outreach trips. Will you teach us? So a team from our church helped put together and helped lead a global outreach youth trip for another local church. So now they can do it effectively. And we gave them, we gave them all the resources we've developed, all the devotional materials, all the training materials. We gave it all to them for free. 
You say, why would you do that? They're the competition. They're the church down the street. They are literally down the street. Why would you do that? What's the answer? Because we're the church. They're not the competition. They're not the enemy. (coughs) They're not the competition. They're not the enemy. They are part of the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? We are one church together. Even though we may have different expressions of how we do that, if Christ is on the throne, if we worship him, if he alone is savior, if God, the Bible is God's word, then we're in this together. And they're a Bible-believing Christian church. So we partnered with them. We had a team of 14 people go to Guatemala this year and helped in building two houses, two stoves, which are central to their homes and their community, and helped with the construction of a new church. We did a vision trip to Guatemala And we trained pastors down there on how to go out with the gospel. We're having people come and ask us, will you teach us how to be a church that doesn't just focus in, but focuses in and grows believers, but then goes out with the good news of Jesus. So we did training in Guatemala. This right here is called the treasure. Some of you know about this, some of you don't. This is the whole Bible right here. And this little solar panel, you lay it out in the sun, you charge it up, you turn it over, you hit the button, and you listen to the word of God. We have access to these through world mission in 6,000 languages. In many parts of the world, people are oral learners. They don't learn by reading anymore, like America. Um, <clears throat> we're, moving that, we're moving that way as a nation. I mean, we're, we're becoming more oral story, watching stories versus, versus reading. But there's parts of the world where people, know, where there's entire communities where nobody reads, but they learn by listening. How do you get them the word of God? Here it is. And I gotta tell you, Shirley, I wanna bless you as a congregation. We have sent treasures. I already have one, Dennis. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, thank you. Dennis brought me a fisherman's friend. This is a commercial break for fisherman's friends, a fine cough drop. Thank you, Dennis. Um, so we have sent treasures. We have sent treasures, the solar-powered audio Bibles this year. Listen closely. Because of you, your giving, and your commitment to Mexico, Guatemala, Puerto Rico, Kenya, the Philippines, and India. Someone say praise God. Praise God. Yeah. And then <clears throat> we have people in our church making dresses for little girls who wouldn't have a dress. It's called Dress a Girl Ministry. And we've sent dresses this year to Guatemala, the Philippines, Mexico, and India. We are training between 500 to 700 pastors in India and Sri Lanka in the next three or four weeks, in January. Because we have churches around the world that are coming to us and saying, we're churches that love Jesus, but we tend to focus in, 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 and we're not impacting our community. And Shoreline seems to have this thing about growing believers but also reaching their community. Will you teach us how to do that? Will you teach us how to go out with the gospel? So we have a team of leaders from Shoreline going to train 500 to 700 pastors internationally in January. Here's what I want to say to you as a congregation. Thank you. Thank you for being a church that doesn't just say it's about us, but it's about Jesus and his good news and his power and his glory. And so we are able to do these things because you pray, because you serve, because you give. In this last year, we built a whole new youth room because of your generosity. And if you haven't been through the youth space, it's a beautiful space designed for students. In this last year, we redid our whole children's area and added a whole new area for children's ministry. In this last year, we were looking at buying a building next door. The one we thought we were gonna get didn't work out, but God opened up the doors for another building. It now belongs to Shoreline Church and we'll move in in probably four to six weeks. We're gonna have an open house when we do and let you see that space that God has provided because God is growing the work he wants us to do as a congregation. Community outreach. I asked our community outreach team to give me an update from the last year, and they make this uh, little little Christmas tree uh, letter every year, and it says what they've been doing. And when I say community outreach, I mean you. It's just shoreline people. But but I, I started looking at this. I can't even list all the ministries. I highlighted some of them. These are all ministries that happen here at Shoreline, either weekly, monthly, or yearly. But listen to this. Here's some of the ministries that Shoreline, and, and there are hundreds of shoreliners giving thousands and thousands of hours to these different ministries. Safe Place, Christmas Caroling, Bless Our Local Schools, I Help for Women, Food Pantry and Clothes Closet. Listen to this. This last year, we served, we served meals to 3,839 adults, 2,479 children here on our campus. And we provided food, bags of food, and we always offer to pray for them and talk about their lives and also minister to them and care for them. And then also, clothing closet. 998 women have come to our clothing closet and 740 children just for basic clothing needs. And then also 617 men have used our clothing closet, your clothing closet. This is your church. 
And it's, it's, it's people showing that are there caring and giving and serving. That's what we do. And it just goes on. Women's shelter visits, men's shelter outreach, school supply drive, Monterey Company Reads Program, Benevolence and Hope, Love Our Central Coast, 45 different projects done in collaboration with other churches. A gift a card ministry, sending cards to people that just don't have any care for them. Operation Christmas Child, Feeding the Homeless, Heart to Home Ministry, Valentine's Day Card Making for Care Centers, Cypress Ridge and Win Windsor Monterey Care Centers, Angel Tree, which is giving gifts to uh, children of people who are incarcerated. And I, that's only the ones I marked in orange. About half the ones I didn't even mark. That's what you're doing. Can someone say, praise God? This is the call of Jesus. This is what we do because we are the church and it's more than just getting what we want. It's giving the love and the hands and the heart and the grace of Jesus Christ. And then another aspect of our ministry. About 30 years ago, uh, my wife and I began to develop something called organic outreach where we said, how do we help local churches, not just be churches that turn in, but that, that would encourage believers, would glorify God, but would go out with the love of Jesus. And we started 30 years ago, we started trying to figure out what that looks like. And we've written about it, prayed about it, and taken basically almost a lot of our spare time in the last 30 years to go train churches and train leaders. Shoreline Church's leaders came to us about two years ago and said, can we help with Organic Outreach International? It's basically, one, one leader said, it's gonna kill you and Sherry to keep using all your spare time to do that. Can we start building a team of people? And can we as a church help other churches go out with the gospel? Can we be part of that training? And two years ago, we started doing this together. I want you to know what's happened over the last couple of years. Listen to this. In 2016, we, the first year we did this, we did one training, a two-day intensive. It's just two days where you bring leaders in from different influential places and teach them how to go back to their country, their region, their denomination, and move people out with the gospel. So two days intensive training. And we trained 72 leaders. We thought that was amazing. Last year, we did four intensives Two in Monterey, one in Virginia, one in Guatemala, and we trained 290 strategic leaders. Four times as many leaders were trained. And on top of that, we trained 2,500 other leaders and other trainings we're doing around the world. And that's going to grow in the next year. That's part of what God is doing in multiplying the work of Shoreline beyond ourselves. We have these gatherings, the online gatherings, where we'll have six to eight leaders who will meet with a Shoreline leader and be trained online. We have leaders in New Zealand, Australia, uh, different parts of the world that are part of us and all around the United States. We now have 20 of those training events that goes on every single month wow. led by your leaders and we can do it because you're committed beyond ourselves. I mean, Shoreline's mission is to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. I'm gonna say that again. Our mission is to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. That's not just in Monterey. Jesus' vision was from right where you are in Jerusalem to Judea, the surrounding area, to Samaria, the tough places, to the ends of the earth. And that's our mission, and that's our calling. And this, it just goes on and on. We now have a three-year training program for outreach in English and Spanish that's online on our website. If you just, just pull up Organic Outreach International or Organic Outreach Shoreline Church, you'll find our website. We have a newsletter. But if, if you went there, we, we, we now have a three-year training program that's free for anyone in the world to download in English and now in Spanish, and we're doing it now in, in one Indian dialect. You say, well, how, do you how can you possibly have the time and energy to put all that together and then to give it away to churches all around the world? Here's the answer. Because of you. There are thousands of churches all over the world that are learning to be the church God wants them to be because you have chosen to say we are going to be bigger than ourselves. And I believe the year ahead will be even more glorious right here on our campus, right here in our community, and to the ends of the earth. So as we come to the end of 2017, we kind of peek over into the new year. The next five weeks, we're going to be talking about our personal lives and how to live a healthy life. But today, I want to end this year just saying, we are the church. You are Shoreline Community Church. And we exist to glorify God, to grow believers, and to reach out with the message of Jesus. And I believe we're doing that in growing measure in every single area. All praise to God because God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Living God, we pray that as we close the service with just a song of celebration, and then as we go from this place into the end of this year and the beginning of a new year, that we will sense your presence in fresh new ways. We will see the work you are doing. We will hear your voice in clearer ways. 
We will feel your call with greater passion in the depth of our souls and our hearts. And Lord, we pray that together we will be launched into a new year where we don't just live a personally healthy life, but we also corporately are the church that you called us to be, fulfilling your mission, bringing glory to Jesus. So Lord, this is our prayer as we come to the end of this year and begin a new year. May your kingdom come. May your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven for the sake of Jesus. And everyone said together, amen.